Hi, this is Dushan. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to interface with gamepads through the browser. Today, I'm on Mac OS, and the tools I'm going to use are iTerm2, Vim, Python 3 HTTP server module, and the Chrome browser. You can follow along using any tools you prefer. In addition to running through the gamepad API code, you might pick up and learn some Vim along the way. So, let's begin by quickly creating a working directory. I'll create one on my desktop and call it gamepad test. Inside of it, I'll create a basic HTML file. Name it index.html, generate a skeleton, and change the title to say Gamepad API Test. I will then use the Python 3 HTTP server to serve the Gamepad Test directory. The output says that our server is listening on 0.0.0.0, .0 which means it's listening on all interfaces available to the machine, including our localhost loopback interface. It's listening on port 8000. If we copy and paste this into the browser, we will see the index.html file we just created. We can tell that it's being served by looking at the title. Now that our working directory is being served by Python, we are done with the setup and we are ready to write the gamepad code. I will go back to Vim and create a separate JavaScript file where I'll write the gamepad code. Just to be sure that the JS file is being served properly, let's do a quick hello world. And of course, link it in our HTML. When I refresh the page, I can see the hello world logged to the console. I always like to do these sanity checks when introducing new files. Now, let's finally use the Gamepad API. The Gamepad API is really simple and straightforward. The basic things that we can do is listen for gamepad connected and disconnected events. Let's go back to the page and reload. Now when I plug in my gamepad into the USB port, the connected event will be triggered. We can see the gamepad object logged to the console. Keep in mind that sometimes you need to press a button on a controller in order for the gamepad API to activate. I'll unplug the gamepad to see the disconnect event firing as well. Now let's see how the gamepad API would be used in a game. Browser games tend to use the window request animation frame function for their game loop. Let's get a really simple animation loop going.
when set up in this way. The update function will be called approximately 60 times per second, which generally matches the display refresh rate in most web browsers. To know which buttons are being pressed, we can query the gamepad state once per frame using navigator.getGamepads. Log those gamepads to the console. The gamepads are being logged to the console on every animation frame. I will plug in my gamepad again and we can see it in position 0. The gamepad properties I'm mostly interested in are ID, axes and buttons. Let's display those properties in the HTML document. I will go to index.html and create a pre element with an ID attribute whose value is gamepad display. This pre element will be used to display the gamepad state. Let's give it some style by setting a background color, a font color and some padding. Now let's go back to JavaScript and obtain a reference to the gamepad display. Next, I'll get rid of the console.log and say if the gamepad at position 0 is available, extract its ID property into the gamepad state object. And I want the gamepad display to display this gamepad state formatted using json.stringify. Keep in mind that this is happening on every animation frame. Let's go back to the browser and hit refresh. Our gamepad display is currently empty since no gamepads are available. I have to interact with the gamepad by pressing any of its buttons. And now the browser recognizes it and we can see the gamepad's ID. I use the generic Chinese no name brand gamepad and that's why the ID is not telling us much. I'll kill the console, go back to the editor and extract the axis state from the gamepad. I grab the state of the first axis, which is a float, and limit it to two decimal digits. This needs to be repeated three more times for the three remaining axes, and here is where Vim's macros come in handy. In Vim, you can record a sequence of commands to a macro register, which I will do now. I'll use the character Q as the register, then record copying the line and incrementing the axis index. I'll hit Q again to finish recording. I want to repeat the recorded sequence two more times, so I press 2 at Q. Perfect. Vim macros can save valuable seconds of typing. Other editors also probably have some sort of macroing built in as well. Now let's move on and extract the pressed state for every one of the 16 buttons. This needs to be repeated 15 more times. So, I will use a macro again. I'll overwrite the Q macro register and record copying a line and incrementing the property number and the button index. 
I want to apply the macro eight times. Five more are missing and for those I create the first line manually and then create yet another macro since this time we are dealing with two digits in the property name and the button index. Repeat it four times, save the file and we are done. The gamepad display now shows the gamepad ID as well as the state of all axes and buttons. As you can see the gamepad API is pretty simple to use. You can take it from here and integrate gamepads with your browser games, VR experiences or whatever you want. I have included some very useful links in the video description as well. Also, feel free to leave a comment saying what programming topics you're interested in and I will consider them for future videos. Until next time.